Hey guys, look who's back. Long time no speak. Today, we're gonna to get straight back into it and do a follow-up on a video I did a couple of years ago about connecting retro computers to the modern internet and reliving those BBS days. Now, in my last video that I made about two or three years ago now, I used a modern PC connected to the internet and then rerouting traffic via a null modem cable into an old Amiga 500, which did work, but it was a bit of a clunky solution. And today, we're gonna to be looking at a more modern solution that will allow you to connect your retro computer, be that a PC, an Amiga, an Atari ST, an Acorn Archimedes, up to the internet, and then checking out bulletin board systems. And for that, we're gonna be using this little device here, a Y modem 232. Now, ever since I was a kid, I've been fascinated with the idea of connecting my computer to others. Maybe because of watching movies like War Games or picking up magazines with comm sections and marvelling at those intriguing looking ASCII and ANSI screens of bulletin boards. Or maybe even the idea of all of those amazing files I could receive from those exotic faraway phone numbers listed before my newest game. Even the idea of being able to talk to other people and transfer files always seems so exciting. In fact, my brother and I actually had two network computers in our bedrooms, linked by a null modem cable that we snaked out of our bedroom windows, and then that would let us chat to each other using a terminal program instead of sleeping at night, or maybe even playing multiplayer games like Battle Chess and Lotus 2. I did actually call a few of the early online services that I would read about in magazines or books or maybe watch on late night TV shows like The Net that used to be on BBC Two late at night. Uh, stuff like Kix that I called on my school's Acorn computers when the teacher had their back turned. By the time I got online at home, it was the mid 90s by then and obviously the World Wide Web had really just steamrolled everything else, including bulletin boards. But the idea of connecting my old machines to early style online services like bulletin boards still fascinates me even today. Maybe it's just kind of seeing what I missed out on when I was a kid or the fact that I always wanted to get my old Amiga 500 online. So maybe that's a bit of a fulfilled childhood dream at long last. Or maybe just the fact that it's so damn cool to be able to connect a 30 year old computer to the modern internet and explore all of this in 2019 without the expensive cost of those long distance phone calls. Now using the Y modem 232, you can connect your retro computers to your modern Wi-Fi network and trick them into thinking it's 1988 and they're dialing up a physical modem directly into a bulletin board. Using a standard DB25 female RS232 connector, you can plug it into all kinds of retro computers, stuff like classic PCs, Atari STs, Acorn Archimedes, classic Macs, and of course, the Amiga. Now it does use a 25 pin serial port by default, but you can use an adapter if your retro system of choice has got one of these smaller nine pin connectors. I mean, looking through eBay, you can get these for just a couple of pounds. And the Wide Mode M232 itself comes in two different versions, one with an OLED display and one without. Now the one without only costs about $9 less, so I think it is worth having. And I picked mine up with the screen from cbmstuff.com for $54.95. And the shipping was pretty cheap as well because it's only a really small device. Connecting it up is really simple too. Just plug it into the back of your computer, attach a 5 volt USB power source that can be like a phone charger or even just from a PC USB port using a mini B style connector. Then just load up your terminal program of choice and after some simple configuration you're away. Now using the Y modem 232 is actually really straightforward. There is a PDF manual that you can download from their website and I'll put a link in the video description. One thing to note, there is another similar product called the Wi-Fi 232. Now these are not compatible with the same command set. There are lots of videos about the Wi-Fi 232. I think Modern Vintage Gamer did one, um, LGL's got one as well, but these are different products and the commands that you'll use on the Wi-Fi 232 will not work on the Y modem for the most part, they are different. So make sure that you're reading the correct instructions and that will save a lot of headache. So when you're all connected and your terminal program's loaded up, the first thing that you'll want to do is to configure your terminal program to 300 board, which is the default setting of the Y modem 232. And then type in ATI, and that will bring up some information about the Y modem 232, including stuff like the currently installed firmware version, which can be updated via Wi-Fi and network information too. Now, as you can see here, mine's already connected to my office network, which is called Paris. 
and then you'll want to change the baud rate to something a little bit quicker. So I'm going to go with 9600, which um, I find is reliable on a stock Amiga 500. And you can actually get a list of your local Wi-Fi networks just by typing in ATN. And I've got a mesh network, so as you can see, we've got my two home networks here. And once you're connected to your Wi-Fi network, we can do a quick test to make sure that we can connect to the outside world by using a ATDT DAL command into Google's port 80. And as we can see, everything is working properly and we've got a connected message. And this is where the fun begins. So now that we're connected, the next thing we'll want to do is call up a bulletin board. But, you know, in 2019, where do you find out the names and addresses of bulletin boards? Well, there is a really good website called the Telnet BBS Guide that lists a regularly updated list, actually, of bulletin boards that are active now. And even better, you can connect to them and test them out using their built-in web-based terminal program. So if you want to see if a board is active or displaying properly on your retro computer, it's a good way to easily try them out first. And another really good resource is Reddit's BBS section, where they actually have some good discussion going on there. And there is even a BBS for their Retro Battle Station subreddit that's worth checking out. So getting back to the Y modem and the Amiga, let's try connecting to our first board. Now doing this is really simple. Type in the connect command and then the telnet address and port. And we are connected. And look at that lovely ASCII rendition of the later Amiga logo. Now when you first join, most bulletin boards will give you a little bit of information about the system they're running on. Uh, this one here is called the CIA Amiga BBS, um, I don't think operated by them. Located in Mayflower, running on a real Commodore Amiga 1200. I always prefer boards that are actually running on real hardware. And then you'll usually need to register with a board. Pretty much all of them will ask you to give a bit of information, but some will allow you to access them using a guest account to have a little basic look around. And after you've got through the registration process, you're then free to explore the board. Now, most BBSs have a user message area, which uh, really, I mean, going back to the roots of it, is the basic essence of a bulletin board, to talk to other like-minded people. Before the days of web-based forums and social media, this is where geeks would hang out to get technical help and share product reviews and information, or even just to chat about computers and life. And one thing that you'll find on a lot of the boards, especially for ones for specific computers, are file download sections as well, where you can transfer programs, games, images from the bulletin board to your local machine. Another thing that is quite common on many boards is online games. Now, we're obviously predating stuff like Steam and Xbox Live by many decades here, so they're not going to be that advanced, but actually you can get stuff on here that are loads of fun to play. It could be like simple games or even multi-user dungeon games. And MUDs can have like, you know, hundreds of people playing all at the same time. And they can be lots of fun. Some boards even allow you to chat in real time with other users. Um, even using stuff like Telnet to IRC bridges. So if you ever wanted to chat to the world using your childhood computer, you can do that with the Y modem 232. Now, maybe looking at this, you're thinking it's really cool and you'd like to give it a try. Or maybe looking at it thinking, oh, well, what's the point? You know, we've got stuff like the web and YouTube and that today. I think really, you'll either get this or you won't. For me, the real joy in using the Ymode modem 232 and the reason that I've probably spent far too many hours on it over the last couple of weeks is probably, like I said before, a bit of a childhood dream fulfilled. And for me, it actually does feel as exciting as it would have 30 years ago to explore these other systems. And I think the reason for that is because using a bulletin board compared to something like the web is that a BBS feels a lot more personal because, you know, you think about this, you're literally using someone else's computer. Many of these systems are running on real machines. So when I tell it into one of these boards from my Amiga 500, the hard disk is spinning up and an activity LED light is flashing away on a machine in someone's home office or their living room or a bedroom far away. And they're allowing you the privilege of using their own computer which does feel a lot more personal than connecting to like, you know, a website on an Amazon cloud server. And also, I think it's quite nice to go back to roots and explore these well-trodden tracks and forgotten corners of cyberspace long after the rest of the world's moved on. And just like if you connected to a BBS in 1988, connecting today has got a similar crowd. It's technical users who love computers, a bit of a geek's paradise where you don't have to wade through all the spam and commercialism of the modern internet. So in many ways, it can be a welcome break. So there you go, that's been a look at the Y-Modem 232. I think you can probably tell from this video, 
I'm a big fan of this device. If you watched my last video about connecting classic machines to the internet using that PC solution, you know, it was a bit convoluted, it was a bit clunky, but this, I mean, it's pretty much plug and play. Add power, plug it in, tiny bit of config, and you're up and running. And it does mean that you can jump feet first into the BBS world. Maybe like me, you missed out on it first time round, you used to read about it and always wanted to get involved, or maybe, you're really into it back in the day. It might have even been a sysop of your own board. And there are people actually that run bulletin boards on a real machine using a Y modem 232. So you can actually run a board using one of these as well. Very cool. If you want to get your own, I'll put a link to where I bought mine from in the video description. Thank you for watching. There will be another video next week. I will see you then. Mm -hmm.